Cloud Labs has been promised for a very, very long time, and I've been looking forward to it for even longer. Thankfully, it's now released to public preview, and let me tell you, you really do need to see this. Not only does Cloud Labs come with all the features of the original local admin password solution from, like, 10 years ago, it's significantly better. Firstly, it's super simple to configure. Let me show you. From the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, very simply a case of going down to Devices, over to Device Settings, and from here we have the option to, where is it? Local Admin Settings Preview. We're going to, to enable the Azure AD Local Administrator Password Solution, set that to Yes, and then we can get over to the next bit. From the Intune Admin Center, we're just going to head into Endpoint Security. Scroll down if your zoom level is super high like mine and choose account protection. And from here, we'll choose create policy. And we're going to choose platform Windows 10 and later. Obviously, this only works for Windows 10 and later. In fact, Windows 11 is the, uh, the exact version of Windows you need. Windows 11 isn't very exact, is it? The exact version of Windows you need is at least the April Patch Tuesday release of uh, Windows 11. So as long as you have that, you're ready to go. With the profile, we're going to go down and choose Local Admin Password Solution, Windows Labs. And from here, we'll just choose Create. Now the name, call it something sensible. I'm going to go with Cloud Labs. And we'll choose Next. And from here, we need to create some configuration around Labs. Now, the backup directory, we have a few options. We either have it not configured, in which case it simply isn't switched on like it was before we even started creating the policy. We can choose disabled, in which case the password won't be backed up. Uh, we can choose back up the password to Azure AD, or we can back up the password to AD. Now the devices I'm going to be configuring are not joined to a domain. They're just in Azure AD. So the only option I've really got, apart from not configuring and not backing it up, is to back up the password to Azure AD. There you go. So when we choose that, another option appears. And this is called, this is the password age days. And with this, we can set the maximum age for the password. By default, it's set to 30 days, as you can see in this tooltip. The minimum allowed version is, uh, value is one day. Uh, seven days when you're backing it up to Azure AD. So in this case, we will set it to 30. Let's just leave it as the default, but I'll configure it just so you can see the options there. We'll set it to 30. Now the next option is administrator account name. Now with this, when you turn it to, when you check it to on, you can type in any account name here you like. Bear in mind, this doesn't create the account on the computer. It just manages that account with laps if the account exists. So if you just have the standard local admin that comes with Windows 11 and you haven't changed the password, sorry, you haven't changed the, uh, the name, or even if you have changed the name, it will manage that account if you just leave this to set set to not configured. It will manage the the well known local admin account based on the the SID that of that account. Now, if you have disabled that account and created a new local admin, for example, if you created a new one called Lock Admin or something like that, which is probably the best practice way to do that, you should probably disable the well known local admin account and manage a new one, then you will have to create this lock admin account separately outside of the local admin password solution. So for me, I haven't changed the local admin. It's the well-known local admin that, I, that exists on Windows 11 when you build the device. And in fact, I think I did change the name, but I haven't changed the account. I haven't disabled the account and created a new one. So I'll leave that to not configured because that will find that account based on the SID value. So next we get to choose password complexity. Not configured sets it to large letters, small letters, numbers, and special characters by default. If you don't want that, then choose any of these other three. If you do want it, perhaps just to be explicit with the configuration here, you can set large letters, small, num small letters, numbers, and special characters as the complexity for your password. Then you also get to choose the password length. Now by default, it's 14 and we can set it to anything you like with a maximum of 64. Let's do 32 just for fun. And post authentication actions. Now this is where it gets interesting because it's actually better than the original local admin password solution, in my opinion. 
With post authentication actions, you can set what happens after someone has used this account. So if you give someone the local admin password solution password, so they can log in and do one specific thing on that computer, what happens then? Well, we get to say that if the grace period, which we might set to an hour or a day or whatever, after it, uh, that period has been elapsed, what happens? Well, we have the option of reset password, and in which case the password will be reset. We can reset the password and log off the account if it's logged on. We can reset the password and reboot, or we can set to not configured. So if we choose not configured, let's just check what it actually does. If not configured, it will default to setting three, which is reset and log off. Okay, so I'm gonna go with reset the password and reboot. And let's take a look at the options here for the number of amount of time in hours. So the minimum you can set it to is one hour for a post authentication reset delay. Now, if you set it to that and have it to reboot, that's probably a little bit extreme, but is, you know, very possible. Maybe I think the, the one I would normally set in my environment, if I was configuring this for a production environment would be to reset the password and log off the managed account after an hour. So with that all set, simply a case of choosing next. No scope tags in this environment. Next, and we get to specify the devices that will receive this policy. And in this case, I'm gonna go with all devices because that's what I usually do at this stage because I've only got a couple of devices in my tenant at any one time. Choose create, and off we go. So now Intune has started to push that configuration profile down to my test devices. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at how this actually works when you are looking at this from the endpoint side. See you next time.